Islamic banking is guided by Islamic economics and follows the principles of Sharia. The main law in this type of financial system is that all types of interest are prohibited and this interest is referred to as riba. There is another term which is used for interest in the Islamic financial institutions which is known as usury. In conventional banking interest means a nominal amount charged on the principal amount. But usury is described as significantly high charge on the principal amount. Reba is used for both interest, from conventional banking, and usury. However, there are many important Islamic institutes and schools which do not differentiate between interest and usury. Besides this Gerar and Maesir are also prohibited. Gerar is performing speculative transactions in short it means all uncertain transactions are forbidden in this system. Maesir is associated with business in gambling and wine and is forbidden by Sharia law. There is a Fiqh al-Mu'amalat in place which describes how the transactions should take place. There are concepts such as cost plus or murababa, joint venture, or musharika, leasing l'jaran safekeeping or wadiyat. Broadly there are four principles which cover Islamic finance on whole. Usury or interest is forbidden. Ethical standards. Social and moral values. Business and liability risk. Usury slash riba or interest in forbidden Islamic finance has been deeply grounded on the rules written in the Holy Quran and the Muslims religiously follow the rules in it. The first concept is taking and giving a specific amount on interest is austerely prohibited. Money should not generate profits on its own when an economy is infested because of riba the happiness of the complete society is in danger. If the investors look forward to guaranteed returns and rates of interest then the money that they get back in return will never be fruitful in fact there are negative impacts. Ethical Standards The second principle revolves around ethical standards. It is the religious duty of a Muslim to ensure that the money that they invest in is good. They should keep a close eye on where they are investing their money. Most Islamic investing comprise of serious thoughts on the business in which to be invested. They look into the products that the companies deals in, the policies, the services that it has to offer and the overall impact of the business on the society. There are special rules in share trading when it comes to Islamic investments. They follow the Sharia law before they invest in any company. Social and Moral Value all those who adhere to the teaching of Quran need to care for the poor and helpless. The financial institutions Islam need to make arrangements to offer special services to those who are in need. It is not only the non-profitable organizations or charitable trusts that they are looking forward to but they can also be used in giving out loans without interest or profit which is known as Qard al-Hasan. The Qard al-Hasan also includes giving money to the needy who need for treatment or wish to study but don't have the means to pay for their fees instantly. Qard al-Hasan is given out by the bank for just a year without any charges. Business and Liability Risk The last principle deals with the thought of how fair a business is. Both the parties doing business should be willing to share in both profit and loss of the business. In order to get a return the financer should be willing to bear the risk of the business or offer services such as providing an asset else the financer here is a sinner or an economic parasite as per the laws of Sharia. They believe in the saying of Prophet Muhammad profit comes with liability. If one wants profit one should be ready to bear the loss. Islamic law differentiates lawful profit from other types of gain this is done by relating profit with the probability of loss. All Islamic institutions have to establish a council or the Sharia board that will advise the financial institution on these dealings. The board may comprise of religious scholars trained in Sharia, lawyers, and bankers. Types of Islamic Lending A two-tier Madaraba model was recommended for Reba Free Banking by Muhammad Najachul Asidiqui. Madaraba is a business contract where one party is the brains of the business while the other sees the financial part. The bank would be supply capital while the depositor would be on one side and the entrepreneur of the business would be on the other side that would run the business. 
There would be many other fixed return models supporting this thought such as Ajura or Leasing, Istisna or Cash Advance to manufacture assets and Salam or Cash Advance to purchase agricultural produce etc. The Murabaha models happen to be the best as the results got through them are same as the interest-based finance models. The Murabaha model is a sale where the seller specifically mentions the amount that has been spent on the purchase of an asset and then sells it to another person or the buyer after adding some amount of profit to it. The assets managed under these products surpass the profit and loss sharing methods like Madaraba and Musharika. In Musharika model the capital, labor, or skills are both shared jointly by a partner. Murabaha could be said to be an Islamic mortgage transaction as here the bank instead of lending money to purchase an asset the bank buys the asset from the seller and resells it to the buyer at a profit and lets the buyer pay in installments. Since the profit of bank cannot be stated clearly thus there are no extra charges or penalties for late payment. This is why to safeguard itself against any payment evasion the bank is quite strict in asking for security. The lands or goods are registered in the name of the buyer as the transaction commences. Another way of leasing real estate is through Ajarawa Iktana. The loans for vehicles are also handled in a similar model the vehicle is sold at an augmented price compared to the market price to the debtor and the ownership of the vehicle is given only once the load is cleared. Musharika al mutanakasa is applied by some Islamic banks for home loans. The borrower and the bank get into a partnership and agree to provide capital at a certain percentage to acquire the property. The borrower then pays rent under the partnership entity. The proceeds from the rent of the present equity share of partnership is shared by the borrower and the bank and the borrower who is in the partnership also purchases the bank's share of the property at decided installments till the full equity is moved to the borrower and the partnership is over. In case of any default both the borrower and the bank get a part of the proceeds when the property is cold depending on the present equity of either of them. This way is usually followed for floating rates as per the present market rate in countries that follow dual banking systems such as Malaysia. Islamic financial institutions use many other ways of making business transactions. Islamic banks lend out their money to companies who issue by floating rate interest loans. Along with the individual rate of return of the company the floating rate of interest is attached. So, the bank's profit on the loan is equivalent to a specific percentage of the company's profit. As the principal amount is cleared the profit sharing also comes to a stop. This is known as Musharika. Islamic banking is confined to transactions that are acceptable only in Islam which exclude pork, alcohol, or gambling etc. The main aim in Islamic finance and banking is to invest ethically and buy morally. In books, Islamic banking is full reserve banking where the banks achieve a 100% reserve ratio but in practice this actually doesn't happen. There are no situations or examples where 100% reserve banking exists.